are sloping foreheads and large brow ridges in Neanderthals really evidence for ape ancestry? Now, in part one, we suggested that Neanderthals are not related to apes just because they possessed large brow ridges and sloping foreheads. After all, humans that are alive today possess similar features. But that still leaves some unanswered questions. If features like large brow ridges and sloping foreheads have got nothing to do with ape ancestry, then how do Neanderthals, as well as other so-called ape men, fit into the Christian worldview? Well, let me start by asking you two questions. And I'll ask you to pause the video after I ask each question so that you can really think about it. So here's the first question. What do you think Adam looked like? And here's the second. Given these skull types, which one do you think best represents Adams? Now, in answer to the first question, I'm going to suggest that you thought Adam looked something like this. In other words, a non-white, darker-skinned person having Semitic-like features. What about the second question? Were you struggling over which skull shape to choose? Perhaps you were looking for the more generic anatomical skull, something like this. In other words, perhaps you were looking for a modern human. I would like to suggest, however, that Adam's skull type probably looked more like that of the Neanderthals or even Homo erectus. And here's why. If large brow ridges, sloping foreheads, as well as some other so-called primitive traits have got nothing to do with ape ancestry, then Neanderthals and even Homo erectus must have been fully human. Yet from a young age creationist perspective, all humans, which include Neanderthals and Homo erectus, must be traced back to Noah and his family. They can't be traced back to Adam because most creationists believe that pre-flood humans left behind no fossil record, and that the fossils we do have come from the post-flood world. Since Neanderthals and Homo erectus appear first in that post-flood fossil record, even before Homo sapiens, then it stands to reason that Noah, and thus Adam, more than likely looked something like this and not like this. So putting human origins into context, let me propose a hypothesis. What if all post-flood humans look something like the Neanderthals or even Homo erectus? At the Tower of Babel, these early humans lost most of their culture when God confused the language. As early humans dispersed from Babel, many of them adopted hunter-gatherer cultures. Since the Earth's natural systems were still in a state of flux, after a global flood, which I'm going to suggest ended in about 3500 BC, post-flood humans experienced an initial and rapid pulse in morphological diversity, producing multiple different human groups including Neanderthals, Homo erecti, and Homo sapiens. For whatever reason, the Homo sapien morphology began to dominate. This group seemed to possess great dispersal and exploratory techniques, together with interbreeding and genocide, eventually came to replace all other human morphologies. These events may have taken less than about 500 years. At the same time, and as Earth's natural systems reached equilibrium and Homo sapiens became more settled, other climate-dependent traits like hair texture, skin color, and minor facial features became fixed in populations. Now, for a more detailed explanation on some of the ideas that I've proposed here, then please take a look at this paper that was recently published and presented at the International Conference on Creationism just this year. Okay, so that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Look, please, if you thought that this video was in any way helpful, then share it on your social media platforms. Go ahead, hit the like button and subscribe for easier access to more videos later. Ring the bell while you're there. Uh, if you wanted to donate, then please 
I'd appreciate that. There is a link in the description which will take you to a PayPal page. I also have a website, www.creationunfolding.com. You'll find more resources there. There's a book if you're interested as well. And look, above all, please just go ahead and pray for me. If you can spend just a couple of seconds and pray for me right now, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you and goodbye.